In the last lesson, we learned about Bayesian games or games with uncertainty. What you see on the screen here is just a redrawing of that game. In this game, player one can be one of two types. He can either be good friend, P1G, or a bad friend, P1B. When he's the good type, his payoffs indicate that he prefers to go to the same place as player two. In other words, he gets a positive payoffs when they either both go to the concert or they both go to the sporting event. In the other case, when he is a bad friend, player one gets a positive payoff as long as they don't go to the same place. In the bottom left corner, I've listed the player's strategies. Remember, player one's strategy or his action must specify what he does for each of his types. So for example, A11, player one's first action is to go to the concert when he's good and also go to the concert when he's bad. On the other hand, A12, player one's second action is to go to the concert when he's good, but go to the sporting event when he's bad. So again, remember the Nash equilibrium, it's the same definition that no player can do better in terms of expected utility by changing their strategy. Now, I wanna look at a particular profile, A12, A21. A21 is player one strategy, or I'm sorry, A21 is player two strategy that says go to the concert. Remember, because player two only has one type, he always is the type that wants to meet up. His action just says, or his strategy just indicates what he does. He doesn't have to indicate what he would do for different types because player two only has one possible type. So, Again, as I mentioned, we want to look at this profile, and we want to see if this is a Nash equilibrium. So remember, to figure out if a profile is a Nash equilibrium, we have to check to see if any player has an incentive to deviate. So let's look at player two's expected utility first. So what is player two's expected utility when player one plays A1-2 Player two plays A21. Okay, remember we specified Q in the last lesson to be the probability that player one is of each type. So there's a 50 50 chance that he is a good friend and 50 50 chance he is a bad friend. So half of the time, player one will be a good friend and he will go to the concert. And in that case, because player two, A21, specifies that player two goes to the concert. Player two will earn a payoff of two. The other 50% of the time, player two still goes to the concert, but player one now instead goes to the sporting event. And in that case, when they mismatch, player two earns zero. And in this case, his expected utility is one. Now, does player two have an incentive to change his strategy. So to see this, all we need to do is check player two's utility, holding player one's strategy constant at A12 to A22. In this case, half of the time, player one will be of the good type, but his strategy specifies he goes to the concert when he is the good type. And if player two is going to the sporting event, they mismatch, so player two earns zero. The other half of the time, they will both end up at the sporting event because player two would always go to the sporting event, but player one only goes to the sporting event when he's a bad friend. And in this case, player two would earn 0.5. So what we see here is player two does not have an incentive to deviate because he earns a higher expected utility when he plays action A21, when he always goes to the concert, then when he plays action A22, he always goes to the sporting event. So again, player two does not have an incentive to deviate. To see if player one has an incentive to deviate, we need to look at first his expected utility when he plays A12 and player two plays A21. So in this case, 
Half of the time, when player one is of the good type, they will meet up and player one will earn one. On the other hand, half of the time they will mismatch because player one will be the bad friend and A12 specifies he goes to the sporting event when he's a bad friend. And in that case, he will earn a reward of two. His total expected utility will be 1.5. So we already said that player two does not have an incentive to deviate. All we need to do to see if A12, A21, that strategy profile is a Nash equilibrium, is see if player one has an incentive to deviate. To do that, we compute player one's expected utility under all other possible strategies. So, what is player one's expected utility when he plays a 1-1 one, one and player two plays a 2-1? So a 1-1 one, one says that no matter what, player one goes to the concert. Well, half of the time he'll want to go to the concert because he'll be of the good type and he'll earn one. But half of the time he will go to the concert because he's the bad type. But player two is always going to the concert. And since player one doesn't want to match when he's the bad type, he will earn zero half of the time. And this gives an expected payoff of 0.5. So player one does not have an incentive to switch his strategy from A12 to A11. How about when player one does A13 against A21? A13 says when player one is of the good type and prefers to match, he goes to the sporting event. But when he's the bad type, he goes to the concert. In this case, half of the time he'll go to the sporting event when when he wants to match, but because player two is always going to the concert, he will earn zero whenever player one is of the good type. And the other half of the time, when he wants to mismatch, he'll go to the concert, but since player two is always going to the concert, he'll also earn zero because when he's the bad type, he wants to mismatch. And in this case, he earns an expected utility of zero he will never receive a positive payoff. Okay. The last action to check is A14 against A21. And this says no matter what, player one always goes to the sporting event. Well, when player one wants to match, he'll go to the sporting event. But because player two is always going to the concert, Player one will earn nothing. He won't match. However, player one, once again, his action specifies he always goes to the sporting event. So when he is of the bad type, when he wants to mismatch, he will indeed mismatch because player two is always going to the concert. So in that case, half of the time, he will earn two. This gives a total expected utility of one. But what do we see? Under any of player one's alternative strategies, A12, A11, A13, A14, holding player two strategy constant at A21, this is all the same, right? We're keeping player two strategy constant throughout. Player one receives the highest utility when he plays A12. And we already said that player two prefers to play A21 against A12. We have now shown that player one has no incentive to change his strategy from A12 when player two is playing strategy A21. So in this case, A12, A21, player one going to the concert when he's the good type, but going to the sporting event when he's the bad type, and player two always going to a concert is a Nash equilibrium of this game. I encourage you to use an exercise to see if there are any other pure strategy Nash equilibria. Of course, an additional exercise would be to find the mixed strategy Nash equilibria, but that can get very complicated very fast. As I mentioned before, there's a lot more notation to completely formalize 
this notion of a Bayesian game or a game with uncertainty. However, this lesson and this example illustrates how players still maximize their expected utility holding other players' strategy constant. If that condition holds for all players, we are once again at a Nash equilibrium.